Hello, this is Claudia Orengo, a graphic designer and an illustrator from Barcelona. And in this video, I want to show you the different ways I use to clean my watercolor paintings. This can be applied to watercolor paintings, any kind of painting. Just the goal is to take off this texture, this background that we have from the paper, even if it's white, black, whatever color you are using on your paper. The goal is to have the watercolor painting or the illustration just cleaned with a transparent background. So I'm here in Photoshop with my scanned painting and we're gonna go through different tools from Photoshop and I'm gonna explain you what I think about each one of them. But uh, just to be clear, I'm explaining all of them because depending on each painting, you will need one or another and you will find that to you it might be more useful one than the other. To me, the most useful one is the color selection that I'm gonna show you in a few minutes, but let's go through all of them. So here on the left, we have all the tools from Photoshop and the ones that I want to talk about are the ones down here. So let's start with the first one. If you click uh, a few seconds over the tool, it will display the others. And we can go to the object selection tool, which is a new one from the latest um, versions of Photoshop. So what, does, what this does, it's you can do a square telling Photoshop here there is an object and when you stop clicking it will think for a while and it will select for you what it has inside so it it recognizes the pixels with colors and it draws you a shape it's not very accurate because as you can see here we also want this out and also these details here and this here so it's a very quick way and it's a very great tool that they just released but in my opinion it still needs some work so if you want to use this you will have to combine it with another tool and in order to explain you the next tool we can use this example so we can go here and take the quick selection tool so the second one and up here you can see there are some options this is just to create a new shape a new selection this one it's to add more um, parts to the, to the original selection so it's like you join two selections and this one is to subtract to take out some of the parts so down here you also have the shape of the size of the brush that you're using and if you go through your image it will show you this circle so this is the size of the of the brush that you have selected right now if you want to take this area out, it might be okay this size, but if you want to take this area out, it's too big. You see, we are selecting also the red and the green area, so we want to make it smaller. So we're gonna select the subtract because we want less of the selection, and we're gonna start with this area here. All I have to do is click one time, and it will automatically create this for me. Again, we need more details so we can go through the areas and go clicking and now we can select a smaller size and subtract all the areas we don't want. So these are the two first tools and as you can see it's not super accurate and it takes a little bit of work from your part to achieve the result you want. So here we want also this area to be selected so we should have this other and go through it until you have the result you want so this can be really helpful if you have uh, shapes that are perf more perfect than this so maybe more geometric like a square or a circle something like this i think these two 
first tools, the object selection tool and the quick selection tool can be really good sol solutions. But otherwise, I would not like to spend so much time selecting each one of my illustrations. So that's why we have the other tools. Okay, so I'm gonna deselect this, pressing Command D, and we're gonna go through this third selection tool, which is the magic wand tool. This, all you have to do is come to the object you want and click one time, and it will select all the areas that have like a similar color. So as you can see here, there is a white dot that it's not selecting. If you want it, again, you can select this uh, joining uh, option and you can click here until you have it. You can even click and drag to make areas bigger. So if you click and drag, it will also select these areas here. And imagine you have this selected and you want to go back. You don't want this area. So you would use this subtract and again click and that's how it quickly changes. And now we can at this green area and we would have a pretty much accurate result than the last one. These are the third, uh, the three selection tools that we have down here. There is a fourth one, let me press again command D to start over, which is this under here we have the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, and the magnetic lasso tool. And the magnetic one, it's, it takes long and you have to be very patient, but if you go through the silhouette of your drawing, you can select all of it as if you were drawing a path but it's just creating a selection. The only problem about this is that you have to go all over the silhouette all at once because otherwise if you stop it will create like uh, a weird selection. So it's, it's gonna select only the area that you have been working on. Let me show you. If now from here you, you move your mouse it will select also this area you see. And if you come back, it will select again this. So it's kind of a problem. You have to work also with a very big zoom. Otherwise, you will not be as accurate as you want. And yeah, I'm showing you the problem so that you see. And again, if you, if you double click and you close the shape, you would have this. So you could continue selecting this multiplying and adding the areas you want. Let me show you quickly. And you could subtract the areas you don't want. So let's imagine you had this problem. You can go back here and finish this so that you don't have this extra white selection. But again, to me, it takes too long and it has too many problems. So I'm going to show you now the one that I use the most. It's my favorite one, but it is because my paintings are in this way. I use the white background. It has not a lot of texture. I like to keep the, the opacity of the paintings, which is the only tool that it's gonna do this. As you can see, the other ones are just selecting areas and they are not keeping any opacity. If we take this area, it's not keeping this as a lighter area. It's not transparent, this area from here. And I like to keep the transparency of the watercolor because I think that's one of the um, beauties of this technique. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna deselect again, Command D, and I'm gonna come up here to select, color range, and we're gonna use this tool from here, and we're gonna come to the original painting and click on the white area. White, black, whatever the color is your paper, but we're gonna just take the color of the paper 
and here if you don't see it like this you should press selection otherwise if you have it in image you will see the same image so it's important to have it in selection and using this range tool you can move it up and down and see how it changes so if we have it at zero you'll see that there are just a few dots with the same color that we selected now if we go up and up and up it starts to show the texture of my paper and what I like to do is I want to go until we can see some of the transparencies of the painting so now you can start to see it here you see so around here is what I'm interested to have it once you have the selection at the levels you want you simply click OK and what you have is the selection of all the paintings that you have in the same scanned document. So this is to me the quickest way to separate the background from the paintings. Now once we have this selection, it doesn't matter if you are using this, um, this color selection tool or any of the others I showed you. What you want to do is to clean out the background. So, since we are selecting the background in this case, and we're just going to come to the layer, just be sure you have it unlocked. If it says something like background, just click two times over the layer, it will open a panel, and you say OK, and it will convert it to an unlocked layer. So, once you have it like this, you can now press delete on your keyboard, and it will disappear all the selection that we have. If you have been using any of the other tools, you would have a selection like this, which is only selecting the drawings. So if you follow the, the last step with it and you delete it, it will delete the actual painting and that's not what you want. What you want is to first invert your selection. So you can do it by pressing Command Shift I or coming up here to select Inverse. So these is, are the commands. You can click and now you have the background selected, you see it arrives until the edges and that's when you can delete it. Now you have all your paintings separated without background and you can come one to one and select them and bring them in individual files if you want to sell them individually or you can save this file as is and that's all. Let me show you what I was meaning with the transparency. You can see here how it starts to show the background but it will be clear if we put here a new layer with any shape. If we paint it in a dark color, you can see how it starts to show down here. So this is the result I like. If you don't like this result, you should select less of the white, but be sure that you are selecting all the background or you can use any of the other tools I showed you. So I hope this was helpful for you and in the next video I'm going to show you how you can bring this painting which is digitized in Photoshop and cleaned in Photoshop into Illustrator and you can convert it into vectors.